afternoon. Back to you with Spice. How are we all doing today? And welcome back to Pie Train Kitchen. Today, we are going to be making the best nachos in the world ever. Bit of time, bit of effort, but it will be worth it. So today, this episode is being filmed in front of a live studio audience. Actually, there's a couple of people. They are six feet apart. Why should you audience? Why should you audience? Yeah, it's not the first time, not the last time I've had the clap, but moving on. So today we are going to do the three components to this. Four of you count the nachos, but I'm not making the nachos. Um, the important one will be a roasted vegetable salsa, which we'll do first. The second component is veggie sauce to die for. And the third component is what will be a lovely piece of fire steak, which we are going to flash fry on the griddle. Got a griddle today, so no annoying bleeping. <coughs> um, and then we're going to slice and dice that really finely, put it across the top. So, again, a little step up from your usual green minced nachos, but we'll make a start. So, the first thing today, we'll run through our sauce ingredients. Now, this is not a traditional sauce. And in fact, we're going to make it in a pan uh, and incorporate all our ingredients. What we're going to do is we're going to take our ingredients here that we've got in this tray. We're going to put it in a roasting tray, which is in a hot oven. Um, some olive oil, salt, garlic, pepper, all that good stuff. And we're going to let it roast. Um, and then when we bring it out towards the end, we're going to stick it all in our blender. Um, and that'll give us our hot roasted vegetable salsa. Um, I'm doing it today in the oven. You can do it on the barbecue. Um, you can do it in the oven. You can do it under the grill. What we want is bring out a lot of sweetness and maximize all the vegetables so let's have a little chat about what we've got so as i put them into the, the tree i will run through what we've got so this tree is pretty piping hot and then we'll spit some that gap so first thing first we've got some nice cherry tomatoes we're going to leave them on the vine because when you roast vegetables in the oven, if it has a vine or a root or any of that good green stuff, leave it on because it just intensifies the flavour. Some golden cherry tomatoes. Um, with some nice plum tomatoes. Probably going to run a knife through them just to get them. Leave them on the vine, but just give them a bit of a split. If the mic's picking it up, you'll hear that stuff is actually starting to sizzle away. Yeah, we're not cutting all the way through. We'll just give them a start. Uh, we've also got our... These are San Marzano tomatoes. These are very famous Italian tomatoes. They're growing on the side of a volcano. Um, so the volcanic ash in the soil gives them a very special flavour. I think it's Neapolitan, Neapolitan pizza. Can only be made with San Marzano tomatoes traditionally. But um, again, they're a different tomato flavour. Got some small peppers. These are just like bell peppers, just different shape. No heat in these at all. So we'll fire these in. These little guys look like chilies, but they're not. They're pepper peppers. There's, for the heat you would get out of a chili that size, you can use 10 of these. So you get lots of chili flavour without any of the chili heat. So we're bang the eight or ten of them in. Happy days. A coriander we're going to leave for when we put it in the blender. Um, and our garlic, what we're going to do is we're going to roast our garlic whole, which again keeps it sweet. And then we're just going to squish the garlic out of the blender at the end. So two big. Two well, a small cove, a big cove, one probably ample. So who we go with us today, Kaylee? So Tommy said afternoon, Chef. Afternoon, Thomas. Karen said good afternoon. Let's see your audience. Nope. Um, and then Alison said, could it be the way? And then she said again, where do we get all of those tomatoes? Um, Aldi. There we go. Bombshell. This is not some artisan fruit shop. This is Aldi. So if any from Aldi's watching, yeah. Um, a good glug of olive oil. 
as this recipe goes on, you'll notice it is not for those on the diet. Because this is packed with deliciousness. <laughs> um, again, you've got a lot of veg in there. Plenty of rock salt or sea salt. If you're using table salt, just take that down a little bit. And plenty of black pepper. So one of the things I'm going to use later on today, I'm going to use it now in fact, this, um, we're basically in the Clyde Valley area of Scotland, just um, east of Glasgow. There's a local producer, um, Smoky Bree, has brought out a, a variety of barbecue rubs and accompaniments. Um, we were kind of switched on to them by our good friends at Donald the Butcher's. So if you're in Arginson Boswell, Hamilton area, um, Donald's are stocking these. They're not expensive. They're between three and four quid a packet. There's a decent amount in there. So 80 grams. So this is a rub. So you, you traditionally we use rubs when you cook low and slow. Today we're going to do something a wee bit different. First off, we're going to put a little bit of it on our veg mix. And then when we cook a flat iron steak, because we're not doing it low and slow, we're kind of cooking it quick and angry. When we're resting it, I'm going to put a little bit of that smoked garlic on top and it should seep into it. So right now we have all our vegetables in here, garlic, salt, pepper, all kinds of yummy stuff. And we're going to get that back in the oven because we want that to roast for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, as long as we can today. Ideally, you want to get some char on that, so if there's some nice little burnt bits at the bottom, that'd be absolutely fantastic. So the next thing we're going to move on to is our cheese sauce. So to start off with that, we're going to put in a little bit of flour, probably about two tablespoons. And the equivalent amount of butter. This is when I realised I don't have a spoon. It's one of our live studio audience. Um, what do I do? Right. Only kidding, I don't. They've said morning chef, and then Karen said, just what the just shield in the corner. Is that your serving part of the leaf? <laughs> no, my shield in the corner was... Uh, this one down here, yes. um, that was a very kind gift from Mr. Matt Ferguson, who's a very talented man when it comes to the metal. Alison um, Ferguson said, what time should you oven at? Take that so seriously. Hot as. <laughs> you genuinely, I'd put it in there maybe about 200 degrees. Watch your vegetables till they start to soften. Um, and then probably finish off under your grill, just to get that char on it. So we have our butter and flour. And what we're doing with that is just incorporating it together, forming a roux, which is a traditional French white sauce, which would be a good time to just uh, move my Michelin star over, since we are using a roux today. John Munn said, hi, Pyra. Where's the little sister? Where's the so we've got a roux there, we're just chucking the flour out. When you put in oh it's government says what I'm gonna really um cook, shocked by cooking noise. Um we put it first to be very white, very pale. We just want to cook it out for a couple of minutes just to take the floweriness out of your sauce. Now this sauce that we're making today. Is a palava. Well, it's not a palava, there's a bit of effort requirement, it's not just stick in a pan, hope for the best. But you can use it for nachos, you can use it for pasta, makes the best macaroni cheese in the world. Um, use it for your lasagna, anything at all. Or you can just make a big pot of it and stick crusty bread in it. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to add to our roux is full milk, full fat milk. This is not semi-skimmed, this is not skimming low, this came from a cow's teat and nothing's been taken out of it. 
right? If you want to make those calorie savings on your milk, do it elsewhere, not in this sauce. So we're just going to pour a little bit in, keep mixing it through with our roux. That will start to thicken up. So how's everybody doing today? Has anybody been offended by anything? Because apparently that's what the world does now. We get offended by things. Um, and being offended gives us the right to destroy property, um, attack our neighbours, steal televisions, that kind of thing. So, um, as we said last week, we are all about social change and inclusion and having the right to protest. I don't get the destruction. I get the fact that people don't want to acknowledge the slave trade, and quite rightly so. But there comes a point where you can't edit or remove history. It's happened. That's why it's called history. Um, what you can do is acknowledge what's happened, try to do better, learn from your mistakes. By all means, make new mistakes. There's plenty of new ones out there. We don't have to keep making the same ones over and over again. But I think it's a, you've got a dangerous path when you start to try and edit, I was going to say whitewash, whitewash history, I thought, no, can you say that? Because that'll probably offend somebody. And that's the very point. People are walking about in eggshells. We're trying to heal. Um, but you can't heal when everybody's so far on edge and everybody's so offended by anything. So, in true pirate time tradition, our motto or our mantra here is, take a breath. Work out why you're being offended by something and how much offence it's costing you, and then balance that offence by your response. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are taking advantage of the situation and using it as a, a right to go and destroy property. And I mean, I saw a thing on Facebook that somebody had defaced the, the um, Robert the Bruce statue with racist thing. That's not somebody that's put, like, up to date with the um, geopolitical finger on the pulse. You know what I mean? That's just somebody that I can't spray paint and just wanted to go and destroy something. So, again, political bit over. Be nice to each other. I think that's, that's the message. Be kind. As, as, as a, a wise doctor once said, never be cruel, be kind. You know, we don't have to destroy properly. We don't have to destroy each other. Be decent people. And if you're not a decent person, it will show out. And those are the people that need to be targeted and behaviours corrected. It's not a country or a, a world walking about on tiptoes. So, did I mention this was also the most politically charged cheese sauce in the world? Alison wants to know how much milk you've put in at that. She's, she's taking this very seriously. So, I'm doing it by sight. Ultimately, what I want from this is a nice white sauce. Um, not Nothing too thick, nothing too thin. Something that when I drag my spatula across the pan, um, it leaves a little pack in the ways. I am the Moses of cheese sauces. Um, so as that roux cooks out and thickens, just add a little bit more milk. So we're probably about a pint in already. Um, once I add the cheese, I'll probably correct it with some more milk just to bring it down to the texture I want. Sylvia says a little late, but I'm here now, and Alison says I am making this too. Um, Sylvia, the mother of Connells. So for those of you who watch or follow the channel, um, my mate Mike lives down in Coventry. Um, me and him spent a lot of years on the road together, wrestling and um, doing all kinds of shenanigans all over the world. Um, Sylvia's his mum. Mike's in the, in the process of transforming his... He's just built an outside kitchen, and now he's transforming his garage into a home gym because he's buff. Or his aspirations of buffness. He wants to maximise his buffosity. Yeah, no, we've been down a rabbit hole with that. So, cheese! Everybody loves a bit of cheese. So we have four different types of cheese today. 
the Pecorino, which is very similar to Parmesan, can be replaced with Parmesan. We have white mature cheddar. We have Emmental, which is a Swiss cheese, which brings a sweet nuttiness to your sauce. Giggity. Um, and we have some yellow cheddar. So I'm just looking at my sauce now. So we kind of get like, I don't know I can use pancake batter as an analogy or what, but if you draw that spoon, it's taking a, a second to drop back into position, which is fine. So in we go with our cheesy, one at a time. Just to get them to start to melt. Any questions or comments there on our? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a little Britain. Oh, We're not allowed to Britain. Britain. Getting the pool down 40 towers as well. Not, not the actual building, but I'm, I'm talking about the online presentation. Okay, so that's our orange cheddar, red cheddar done. Our Emmental. That's my wife's favourite cheese because she's all about the slightly sweet nut flavour. So, um, we don't have the overhead cam today because I wasn't doing anything particularly complicated. I was just stubborn shit. I'm sure you all know how to do that. Um, so, as you can see, Alison, we went from that fairly thin um, pancake consistency. We're getting a reasonably decent shot of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's how starting to tighten up um, as we put the cheese in. Put our white cheddar in. At this point, we're putting pecorino and a lot of cheese in there, so I'm not going to put much in the way of salt in there, but I'm going to put a decent pinch of black pepper. Again, we're doing all this over a low to medium heat. If you don't want to be too, too aggressive, or it will split your cheese. Is that a good Yeah. Um, you don't want to split the cheese because then you get that kind of oily residue um, and the milk, milk salt is going to the sauce. So nice, gentle heat. You're almost making a fondue. I was going to say, if you don't know what fondue is, ask your parents. I'm actually very really starting to realize, probably ask your grandparents. Fondue recipe will be right next to the empty fish bowl. I've never had a fish. Do you explain it? Sorry. Probably get bamboo out in my garden as well. And last thing to go in is a uh, pecorino. Pecorino, if, if you've tried uh, parmesan, it's quite a acidic cheese, quite salty. Um, but with all the creaminess and all the depth to this sauce, um, it does lighten the sauce up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate my cheese and add some more milk. And then at that point, we will look at our steak. So while I'm doing that, do you want to play the t-shirt bump? So how are we doing guys? So that was a little bump for our t-shirts and our merch. Um, try to do content a couple of times a week. Um, we're not fooling MD, this is not Facebook or big brand, but paid for ingredients, paid to keep my wife sober. You know, pay for is not cheap. Um, if you want to support the channel, first thing you can do is give us a like and a share. Let's get the videos out there. Same thing you can do is buy a hat a t-shirt. Still thing you can do is buy a hat a t-shirt and a sexy tea towel. See how it drapes. Um, so who knows, if you buy a tea towel, you might actually be in our live studio audience. But um, no, it's, it's a little bit of fun. It's something for, it's good value. They're really good t-shirts actually. 
um, can you save all those Jesus from Albuquerque? Absolutely. Yeah, this is this is a. Uh, I've got to be careful because Facebook Live has sponsorship things. So unless I buy it from somewhere other than I've already mentioned, so I've told you where I got this from. Um, so everything else was bought from that store. Um, so yeah, so this this is all. This is the point about the cook alongs. Cook alongs are meant to be accessible. They're meant to be. I'm not going to go to artisan places or places that are only available in, in my hometown. Um, I got all of these from Aldi. Um, I got the steak and the salt from my local butcher that I mentioned far too much. But I don't. It's a very good butcher. And don't play the don't 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 easy. Mm -hmm. And wine. I haven't found a sponsor for wine yet. So if you want to buy some wine for the channel, that's also appreciated. Yeah, play the wine. Okay, okay, so we're back. So our cheese sauce is done. So consistency wise, just loosen the office of milk there. Um, so again, hot pancake batter, really hot pancake batter in the pancake. Anyway, that kind of consistency. As this cools down, as we do the rest of our recipe, that will tighten up a little bit. So we'll check it just um, before we go to assembly. I'm just gonna stick it through the back here. We're going to quick check on my veggies. So they've been in 20 minutes. Yeah. So there's plenty of juice there. A little bit of charring on our tabbed on peppers. A lot of peppers are starting to split, they'll brown up. Tomatoes are starting to soften down. The little tomatoes are almost the liquid of our sauce, so that's really going well. Take that back in. We'll move on to our steak. So today instead of induction hog, I'm using this. This is a ceramic girdle um, or plancha. So a little bit of new technology, which may go well, may go horrendously. Well, let's find out. So flat iron steak. Lovely piece of meat. The fibres on this piece of meat run top to bottom. So what you want to do is when you serve it, you want to cut across the fibres of any meat. Um, it's easier to chew. Cut it long ways, you'll be chewing all day. Um, so we're not going to do anything particularly exotic to this. What we are going to do is just run a knife every centimetre, not cutting all the way through. What we're doing is creating surface area. We want to get some nice little charry burnt bits, but we're not going to be cooking this for long. Um, make sure you're nice sharp so you're not sawing away at it. So you see that kind of opened up a little bit. A um, little bit of olive oil. Gonna rub that into our top surface. Plenty of black pepper. Again, rubbing it in, making one in all those nooks and crannies. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands. So I usually use the uh, the rock salt, which is in fairly big chunky crystals because we're cooking with it. Because I want this in the recipe, I'm gonna use some Malvern sea salt, which is more like a flake. You see a difference in consistency. Nice big heavy season. Only really seasoning on one side. We've got a lot going on in this recipe, so um, there'll be plenty of salt and cheese sauce, and there'll be plenty of heat um, to carry the thing through. So we'll take that, stick it on that plancher. Good sizzle. Good sizzle. I believe that. Cook. 
it off with a little bit of black pepper. A little bit of olive oil. Just let me flip that over. So, this is the official three minutes of banter. How is everybody? How is the world? Everybody have a good time? Indian done anything exciting since we've at least locked down a little bit? Anything out there happening? Is there anybody watching the channel at all? Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, things are getting a little bit back to normal, or the new normal, whatever that is. So, yeah, it'll be good. I would just like to warn everybody, I've had no breakfast today, but this wine's lovely. Um, go play the field. We have little trails every time I see wine, here we play the trail. So, we've got a few people, we've had a few people over the house since all the relax, it's been great. We good interact with other people. So, a shout out to our friends that we've had. A few of our friends are still shielding, so we'll see them as soon as we can. Trevor, so Cheers to them. what do you call cheese that's not yours? Somebody else's. I don't know. Is he going to try and be fun? I don't know. We're all grand here. Thanks, Alison. Hope well, Josh is taking notes, Alison. So we're going to have a little look at our, our steak. Okay. Yeah, a couple more seconds on there. We're doing most of the cooking on that side to get that char because that's where our seasoning is. Um, I want to get this cooked off before oh, I pull the sauce out. It was a joke. Okay. <laughs> What do you call cheese? It's not yours. Natural cheese. Natural cheese. I would, I would stick to the detail, Trevor. I, I really would, mate. I would. That, that, that was shocking. Um, no, I feel, I feel quite ill having heard that joke. <laughs> so, if you have the expression, it's as interesting as watching paint dry. This is as interesting as watching paint dry. Now that's a joke. Okay, so I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull my vegetables out at this point. Giggly. Alison saying he's watching I can barely get it to writing I'll send him to the shopping. Good stuff, we've got plenty going on here. All those flavours I've got to know each other really well. So I'm gonna start fishing out the uh, the green bits. So the time has come to remove the green bits. Um, as soon as he invents smell vision I'll become a millionaire because this is uh, fairly awesome and quite hot. Right, I think we're in a position where we can put the steak over now. Ryan, please. Said, I saw the thumbnail. When are we going to see the best naturals? Thanks. Well, these are the components for the best nachos. So we are cooking our steak. The nachos are over there. We've made our cheese sauce. We're currently making our roasted vegetable salsa. Um, so, a little bit of patience does you good. So is anybody having any adventures out there? A lot of people starting to go back to work and starting to go on with their lives. Let us live vicariously through you. What's happening in the world? So our garlic is now cooked and soft and all we're doing is just squeezing that garlic half. The little cloves are popping out. That's some good popping out action. Okay. Just slow more that shit. <laughs> Sell it to Jamie. Okay. Uh, and the roots, just squeeze them out and off the go. So this is basically this. This is the, the foundation for our sauce. We'll give our steak about another 30 seconds and we'll pull that off the breast. Um, we've got some fresh sage and some fresh oregano. That's going to go into our sauce. 
Um, and we'll also get a handful of fresh coriander, which is going to be brighten that sauce right up. Right. That steak is getting as much, has got as much heat as it's getting. After a small bowl, but what we'll do, rest it. So we've turned this off. Put that across there, just give us some room. Whether you like, um, share and subscribe, I'll about to tidy up and we'll set up to make sauce. Welcome back. So what we have to appreciate, everything in here is really hot. Um, and truly the best part, just making sure that works. Um, don't overfill your blender um, because it'll start to, the steam will start to come up and you'll start burning your hands and all other stuff. So we're just going to add this a little bit at a time on this spoon which has magically appeared. So we'll take our larger tomatoes and obviously one of our smaller tomatoes because they're going to take the most grinding to break down. We'll take our peppers. You can put these in holes so you can all have no heat in them. Lid on. Cloth on. And that's how it's kind of got our tomato base or our sauce. Mm. Yes. So our oregano and our sage goes in. Something uh oh, large pepper must be cut. That's all right. We want here different textures, different layers of texture. So as we go on with our blending, um, we'll just be little pulse blends. Pepper trying to escape. Not to my watch, Mr. Pepper. Yeah. We have a successful garlic escape. Yeah, he's only three them. Don't throw it at me. I'm the on screen camel. I will not be garlic. I require no seasoning. Right, so again, we're starting to get to the top of our uh, blender. So. Last little two or three bits and your um, coriander. We'll go in at this point. So we have plenty of pan juices. So we're not going to blend those pan, pan juices. We're just going to wait to the end, put them in and mix them. So again, this is a fantastic standalone sauce. Make this for pasta. Uh, for rice dishes, for poaching chicken in. Yeah, and that's why you don't overfill it. Okay, so our sauce and our herbs. Oh. Sometimes it's good to be the king. Um, So these are our pan juices. Careful, because that pan will still be hot. No, there's that noise you don't open here on a Saturday. There we go. Spoon in, move that about. Oh, 
out of the sea. Out and say, blend toast smooth or leave some chunky back. Entirely up to yourself. Um, I've made a big batch here, but I won't be using all of these on the match because we're going to be using this for other stuff. So I'll tend to blend it smooth. Um, but then you, however long you roast it, however long you blend it, it's how you like. Who one likes one's roasted vegetables? So, we're giving our steak a little bit of time to rest. And we knew that our uh, fibres were running top to bottom. Rinse our knife off. So we're just going to start cutting that nice and thin on an angle. Again, medium rear. Nice little pink strip in the middle. Giggity. Do you want me to try that stuff? No, it's fine. I, I'm sure it'll be fine. So again, this is fantastic done on the barbecue as well because that will really pick up those little char notes. Oh and off. Safety. If we don't want to offend anybody from overuse of oven leak or something like that. And the oven cooling down. It's obviously friendly that I switched it off. So that was probably about a pound, pound and a half of the uh, Flat iron steak supplied by John the Butchers down on East Main Street. Um, other butchers are available. By all means, go and find your local butcher. Um, so there's nothing in here apart from roasted vegetables. So what we're going to do is just take some pieces of our steak and cut it along. So we've got nice little bite-sized chunks. Just for the purposes of keeping them tidy, put it in there. Same thing, just run your knife through it. So it's nice and tender, nice and rested. Some would see cooked to perfection. So that is all our steak in our pan. Lovely jubbly. Very quiet out there today, MD. Got anything interesting to say? Our live studio audience will be a bit shit. They'll be a bit quiet today as well. Mm. Don't know if we're doing that again. <laughs> okay, okay, so we'll take this board out of the way. Being, and we start to build. So, did not make the nachos. Give me a break, guys. Um, we're going to take some of our tomato, roast pepper, garlic sauce, peppers, tomatoes, herbs. Plenty of it, and then plenty of reserve for standalone dippage. Our cheese sauce. Last thing I'm going to add to our cheese sauce. Just to finish it off, is a decent spoonful of English mustard. Oh, just, just under a tablespoon. Five eighths of a tablespoon. Yeah, I'm trying to work that shit out. Karen says we are on our way up to a doggy bag. <laughs> Don't best be quick. So, just incorporate your mustard through there. Put your cheese over your tomatoes. Again, some cheese sauce left over for dipping and finally 
Oodles. The fly on steak. Like I said, this ain't one for those of you who are counting your calories, but as a once a week treat for four or five people. Um, or three muffies, whatever your counting method is. One last little bit of black pepper on there. Tommy says that you're doing better, son. I've also got some pardon peppers, which I kept still raw. Again, not as spicy as the um, chilies, habaneros. Um, but do get a lovely, bright flavour. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, they are the best nachos in the world. If you don't agree, I'm sorry, you're wrong. And you have the right to be offended, please be so. But, um, Alison said, holy shit. Have a go at making them. Did I get anything in that recipe. Oh, oh, applause from the live studio audience. Um, everything in that recipe can be used for 101 things. So that sauce can be frozen, the cheese sauce can be frozen. Use cheese sauce for pasta, use the red sauce for pasta. Use it with steak and chicken and all kinds of good stuff. Put it in the freezer, bring it out, reheat it, bang over chicken breast or some lamb chops, some pork chops. It's all good. So, once again, thank you for joining us. Sorry, I'm just getting in. Was that shot? The money shot? The money shot. So, thanks again for. Thanks again for joining us on this Saturday. I know a lot down there's other entertainment opportunities available to you as things start to lift. Um, by all means, share this. Please share it. Watch it later. Get your friends to watch it later. Um, I enjoy doing it. If you enjoy watching it, I'll keep doing it. Um, but again, thank you very much. So I'm trying to remember my catchphrase. I should write it down. Mm -hmm. Eat like a king, cook like a pirate. Or I'll be able to hear me at this point. Um, have a great week. We'll try and sort out a QA for Wednesday. Go start doing the QAs every second Wednesday. Um, but we'll be back next week with another cook along. For some specifically you want to learn how to make, and we can do it in like half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, give us a message below. But again, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Hit my music.